Blog Talk Radio. You are listening to Night and Day, the Tom Jennings Audio Archive. Welcome to the third installment of Night and Day, the Tom Jennings Audio Archive. My name is Tom Jennings, a music writer for the Niagara Gazette in Niagara Falls, New York. And this third installment features a musician that I absolutely love, John West. John is perhaps best known as the lead singer and bassist in Asia. He did so much more. He was a prolific solo artist. He did stints in King Crimson, taking over for Greg Lake and really putting the band back on the map after Lake left after that first album. He formed the supergroup UK, which progressive rock fans absolutely love UK. And of course, Uriah Heep and just Roxy Music. I could just go on and on and on with different bands that he was in, in addition to his solo work. Well, this interview was conducted when John was coming to the Rapids Theater for a show with Asia. It was not long after Steve Howe had departed, and they had just come out with an album called Gravitas with new guitarist Sam Colson. And after we had the interview, they were kind enough to set me up with a meet and greet with the band. So I was able to, to meet them and kind of hang out and chat with John in person as well. Just a, just a splendid guy. A lot of musical knowledge, of course, but very, very humble. I, I hope you enjoy this interview as, as much as, as I did. Asia was a important part of my life. I saw them on one of their very first shows in Rochester, New York back in 1981. And who can forget that iconic first album cover? Uh, And then was able to catch them again on what would wind up being their final tour with Steve Howe for decades at the Rochester War Memorial in support of their second album, Alpha. And it would be years until the, the group would get back together with Steve Howe again. They put out some great music in the, the 2000s when the original got back to you. And that Gravitas album is a fantastic album as well. Anyhow, uh, John and I touch on a bunch of subjects. One of the I had a lot of questions from back in the day when I grew up listening to Asia. He was a very gracious interview subject, as I'm sure you will hear. And he was over in England, and I was uh, sitting in my mother's living room, actually at her dining room table. So uh, without further ado, I hope you enjoy this. John Wetton. Hello. Hello, is this uh, John Wetton? Yeah, this is Tom. This is Tom. Okay, Tom. Wow. Good. What what an honor. I, I've got to say I've been a, a fan of Crimson, Asia, UK, everything you've done. This is a real, oh, real honor and pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. If we could start with, we'll start with the present and maybe move backwards just a little bit. Yeah. We'll, sure. start, we'll start with the new album, Gravitas. First of all, I, I guess it originally was supposed to come out with the name Valkyrie, which is the lead song on the album. What Correct. made you What yeah. made you guys change yeah. the name from Valkyrie to Gravitas? Yeah, um, for me, I mean, I, my one of my jobs is to come up with the with the titles, really, you know. So I had a I was in a bit of a spot when Steve Howe announced that he was leaving, which is now nearly two years ago. He said he was leaving because he couldn't do both jobs. He couldn't do Yes and Asia. And he wanted to concentrate on Yes, well, it's his first love. I understand that. And I'm not ever going to say anything against Steve. He's He's been a fantastic member of this band for a long, long time. But he sort of, he put us in a spot whereby we were halfway through a tour. We were just about to do a live recording in San Francisco. And he was about to announce that he was would be leaving the band. So in order to counter that, we had to have something to say about it. First of all, we had to decide that the band was going to continue, which we did. We then had to find another guitar player. We had to make sure that our record company was behind us and management was behind us. And we had just got the news that we, we, we landed a festival in Sweden, which we'd wanted to play for a long, long time, which was called Sweden Rock. So uh, I said to management, well, look for this announcement now that we we will be playing Sweden Rock. We'll have a new album. At that point, Valkyrie was just a title and like four chords in my head at that time. But I kind of thought that it was going to be a, a bit of a concept. So uh, Carl and I then put our heads together and we looked 
Well, we had a short list of guitar players, a short list of two. <laughs> One was Steve Lukather, which who I've known for a long time, and he, he has some kind of connection with the band that he played on uh, Days Like These, which was about 20 years ago. We had a single called Days Like These, which Steve Lukather played guitar on. We had the other favorite was Paul, this is Carl's favorite guy. Um, Paul Gilbert, Paul, yeah. From Mr. Big, Paul yeah. Gilbert, yeah. correct, yes. I, I, wasn't a, I didn't know him as well as I knew Steve. We approached both of these guys, and both of them gave the same answer. They said, love to you, darling, but can't. And so when, when Paul Gilbert said this, we said, uh, well, if you can't, do you know someone who can't? Because by this time, we'd sort of run out of ideas. And he said, yes, I do. I know two people. In fact, I know two people who would be really good for you. So he gave us the, uh, the details all the contacts and everything, and we checked them out on YouTube. And the, the English guy nudged it because he was a blank page. There was a, an American guy and an English guy. The, the English guy really was, he was very young. He's the guy we've got now, which is Sam Coulson. Very young, blank page, didn't smoke, doesn't drink, a clean living guy, uh, great vibrato, very bluesy, and um, not very, very eager, very willing to do it. So we chose Sam, and within two days, we could make the announcement that A, we had a new guitar player, B, we would be embarking on a tour of Europe, uh, including Sweden Rock Festival. Uh, we would have a new album called Valkyrie on Frontiers Records, who have, were fully behind us. And it was kind of business as usual. We, we hoped to hit the ground running. And so, when that tour was over and Steve went his separate way, we, uh, Jeff and I started writing this next album, which, uh, which was to be titled Valkyrie. And it came to about six weeks before the end of the album, before, just before mixing had started. And we had a band meeting to see how things were going. And at that meeting, Carl Palmer said, well, I don't like the title Valkyrie for the album. It's too, too feminine. And I, I said, well, actually, it's the, the, the female deity that is a Valkyrie has more power than, than the rest of the gods put together. But I take your point. If you're, I, what I always say is if, if someone's uncomfortable with, with something that I've written, or one of my titles, then I will do my best to, to accommodate that. Unless I feel like it's a sticking point. I didn't feel like it was a sticking point for me because I said, the next thing, the next title that I'm working on is called Gravitas. And at that point, everybody in the room jumped up and down and started doing high fives and said, that's it, that's it, we've got it, we've got the title. So um, that's how that came about. And I said, no skin off my nose, as far as I'm concerned, the album will always be Valkyrie, always. <laughs> Strong, the strongest track on the album, it's where it all began, it's kind of, that's that's it for me. And it was the first track, it's the the featured track is the video um, but the actual title is Gravitas the title track is Gravitas so um, that's how that came about and that's what that's what working in a democracy is you know <laughs> you know the, the whole story about democracy is that when you have a sort of marginal vote say it's 49 to 51 then you have almost half the population that don't get what they want <laughs> yeah. so it's the same in a band you know it, we take a vote on everything, practically everything. I mean, I, now it's down to, to three votes, actually. We have a manager who's quite vocal about stuff. When we can't see that we're putting our foot in it commercially, he will point that out to us. And so he has a he has a pretty pretty big say in, in matters. But we like to keep the band autonomous, but at the same time, internally, it's democratic. How does that work? I don't know. But it's... Uh, it's all I can say is it's worked better now for the last whatever it is, eight years, eight and a bit years than it has than it did in the previous thirty five, you know. I'm doing all the talking here. Oh, that's fine. No, you're the one that's uh, that's gonna have the quotes in the paper, so it's better that you okay. speak, but <laughs> and, and you know, it's interesting you, you speak about uh, you know, the last eight years. I mean I was I actually saw the second show you guys ever performed in Rochester, New York yeah, you on your do. on your very first well, tour, yeah. Two thousand six. No, we're talking 1982. You did the first show of that yeah, yeah. 2006 tour. I remember the tour. first one was at um, Potsdam in upstate New York. Yep, yep. The very first one. And that, then the second one, yeah, would have been Buffalo, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just, I, I mean, you know, there was a lot of energy and excitement at the time. It's interesting. I think when we heard the name Asia and it was on the list, nobody knew what the band was. Somebody thought that it was an African rhythm ensemble because the album was not before you booked the tour. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> you, you know, these, these super group concepts, you got the King Crimson guy, you got the Yes guy, ELP guy, you know, Buggles guy, whatever. Do you think maybe back when you guys first came out, you were just sort of, were you shoved together? And, and that was maybe part of the, the problem with keeping it lasting as long as it did the second time around? Yeah, certainly one of the problems uh, the first time around was that nobody was really prepared for this, the success that we had. We, we weren't kind of shoved together. We, it was quite well thought out. We spent a lot of time in rehearsal. We spent a lot of time. I was fortunate. I had a huge backlog of material. I'd just done an album in... Uh, Miami with Wishbone Ash and they I think they used one of my songs and every night when everyone had gone home I would sit at the glorious Berlendorfer in, in Criteria Studio and just hammer out songs and because I was kind of immersed in Americana living in Miami uh, it, it, it all came really easily to me and they had a distinct sort of FM AM kind of top 40 driving in your car kind of feel to them um, I was very much influenced by by what was going on around me in Miami at that time. Not that not the Latin part of it, but just being immersed in America. Um, I loved it. Every night when everyone went home, which was quite early, I would sit at the piano for a few hours and just rattle off uh, rattle off songs. Oh, excuse me, we've got a, an air show going on in the next town, <laughs> and the um, these enormous jets are using my with airspace as a runway here. So that's kind of deafening noise coming through the, the even the, the double glazing here. Um, so uh, we had a load of wealth of material. And when I met Jeff Downs, we had even more material because I started working with him. And we we became a kind of uh, a marriage made in heaven as far as rock songs were concerned. So and that's a, that's a relationship that still exists today, which I'm very, very pleased about, obviously. When we, we we were thrust into the spotlight, as it were, as the uh, the new supergroup, we never coined that phrase. That was something that was made up by the media. Not that I object to it, but it's, I have to point out that it wasn't our kind of epithet. It was convenient peg to hang us on, so, because there's your headline straight away, isn't it? If the the new band comes from nowhere, there's your headline, supergroup, right. because we'd all been in in bands that people had heard of before. I don't think that's what killed the band in the in the first round. I think the the amount of success that we had came as a surprise to everyone in the band and the people around it. The people in the record company didn't know what to do. They shoved us back into the studio for another album. We could have toured that first album for another three years. Believe me, that's what bands give their right arm to do that. We could have toured that for another three years, but. Twelve months later, we're back in the studio making a follow-up, which is, it's kind of, it's in the same vein as Die Hard 4 should sell more than Die Hard 3. Lethal Weapon 2 should sell more than Lethal Weapon 1, because you already have an audience. It doesn't work that way with music, because I am the most devoted Joni Mitchell fan of all time ever. I worship the ground that she walks upon. And I don't have every Joni Mitchell album. I may absolutely adore one album, go out and buy it, and then miss the next one. I don't religiously go out and buy it regardless because of, because of who it is. And I think the same thing applies to Asia's second album. People were buying the first one. They were still buying the first one when the second one came out. And we, 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 we suffered really from record company pushing us back into the studio too because I happen to think it's a great album the second Asian record so I think we were actually musically finding our feet by that time but the fact is that 12 months later the public just didn't want another one they were still buying the first one so even though it was successful it was kind of regarded as a bit of a failure I mean most bands would have been proud to sell 3 million records but after you just sold 10 million it's a bit of you know the climb down I just think the band was handled very badly. My alcoholism was way out of line at that point. It was blossoming. I didn't take too kindly to all this stuff. I was so completely off the rails. Which is another reason for us choosing Sam Goulton, by the way, 
is that he is a very, very clean living fellow, and we could not afford at this stage of the game to have to to have to kind of endure another train wreck like me. So there, there are reasons for us choosing it, you know, because on the road it becomes very, very difficult if someone is 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 not pulling their weight. You know, if so, I mean, and, and I say that from experience because I was the one in 1982, 83, particularly 83, that had the uh, uh, the alcohol problem, and it dragged everybody down. It, it, it was more than 50% responsible for destroying the, the band first time round. Because also, I think when you take out of a, of, an, uh, of a band, regardless of how great the players are, you take out the singer-songwriter, it kind of, you know, you're ripping the soul, the heart and soul out of the band, aren't you, really? Yeah. Um, uh, and I'm not saying that just to blow my own trumpet. It's a fact. You know, if you take Don Henley out of the Eagles, or Roger Hodgson out of Supertramp, you kind of, you leave a void there because they're the ones that come up with the songs and they're the ones, they're the ones that sing them, you know. Anyway, so, where were we? <laughs> well, we, we were up to the second album, which, you know, I agree that's with you. Album. Is that's a, album. A, uh... Well, I thought the album was really good. I thought the mix was atrocious. Yeah. If, if, if ever an album deserved a remix, it, it's Alpha. But unfortunately, we've contacted Geffen about doing that, and they can't find the tapes anywhere. So that is a non-starter. It could be remastered, but the, un- unfortunately... The, the balance of sound, it's, it's, it's too top-heavy. Oh, yeah. It, it, you know, it's funny. I've never thought about that. But, I mean, and I love the album. Don't Cry is probably one of my favorite Asia songs. And, of course, Smile Left My Eyes. You were playing that on the first tour. But you're right. It does have a really hot, high mix. It's, it's, I hadn't really thought about that. And in a digital era, yeah, that would yeah. be worse. Um, if you listen to Don't Cry, it's just all top. I mean, yeah. but you don't notice it particularly on the radio because it's, it's so... Uh, when you listen on radio, it's usually kind of, um, it's got all that, the condenser on it and everything. But actually, when you listen to it on a decent stereo, it's, it's, it's there's no bass end on it at all. It's all top end. So, uh, that, that would be top of my pri- priorities to call up Mr. Wilson and get him to remix uh, Alpha. But I don't think it's possible un- unless, unless we can locate the tapes. So, but anyway, yes, yeah, so after that, Steve Howe, when I came back into the band, after uh, their little Japanese tour, I, uh, one of my stipulations was that Steve Howe would leave it. That sort of antagonism lasted for quite a while, but it was not there. I have to reiterate, I have to stress this, that it was not there when we reunited in 2006. There was no animosity between myself and Steve Howe. That hatchet had been buried a long, long time ago. Um, in fact, when we reformed the band, uh, 2006 with the, the all four original members we had a band meeting with management and everything at a at, a, at a, a neutral hotel in London and as fate would have it Steve Howe and I bumped into each other in the lobby <laughs> so the scene was all set for a, you know a gunfight at the OK Corral in room 417 and the, it was the sting has already been removed from this entire situation by Steve Howe and I bumping into each other in the, the lobby and just uh, with an enormous hug, uh, we went we went up to the room practically sort of hand in hand. It was just amazing. Couldn't have happened better. But there was never any antagonism between myself and Steve during our last six years of, uh, of working together. In fact, we, uh, the, there was a mutual respect, which uh, it is actually rather lovely. Um, so, I mean, I, I could work with Steve again, no problem at all. Um, yeah, and you guys put out three amazing albums, which is, you know, well, ironic because the albums. first shot around, you did well, two, you, did you know. Place, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, we stayed together longer than the original band, way longer. And we, we put out three DVDs, the Blu-rays, and we also toured a lot. We toured everywhere, you know, we toured America every year. We toured Europe most years. We've toured the UK three or four times. We even toured South America. We did Japan like four times. Um, yeah, we worked a lot more because we could. And actually, I have to say, we were much better. We had a, a lot more choice of material, obviously, but we were actually much better as a band than we were in the original days. One of the, the one of the drawbacks of, of being successful so quickly and on one album is that you only have 40 minutes of material as an entity. Uh, if you have to then borrow from your previous bands, it kind of takes the... Uh, it takes the shine off the new band aspect, you know. 
So what we did was we we padded out the original set with with solos and and bits of the second album, um, the bits that have been written so far. Um, this time we didn't have to do that. This time round we we have plenty of wealth of material to choose from. So um, well, we had, in the last tour we had six albums to choose from. Now we got seven. And, um, and Sam, I mean, he brings, uh, I mean, it's interesting because I know you guys have had a whole slew of guitarists. You know, you mentioned Steve Lucas, or, I mean, he was there briefly, but then you had uh, Pat Thrall, I remember, I think Mandy Meyer at one great. point. But Sam seems to draw like, is, is, am I correct? Am I hearing it's sort of like, Sam seems like the happy middle ground between like a Lukather and a Steve Howe. He sort of has that melodic yeah. feel of Lukather, but he's still got some of that technique of Howe. He's, he's um... He's actually he's got a lovely blues feel, which I like, because it it, it is it's it's the antipathy uh, antipathies of uh, of Steve Howe, who is the sort of clean technical jazzy technician, whereas Sam is very very bluesy and he gets that that lovely sort of big fat tone. He can give you the big chords. He can he can actually do the technical stuff, but with a completely different sound. Yeah, I I really enjoy it. The band terrific on stage now. I mean, I know that Sam is, is almost 40 years younger than anybody else in the band. But at the same time, I have to tell you, to use, to borrow a phrase from, sort of, uh, from football, we have a good dressing room. It's like, you know, the, the atmosphere in the dressing room is, is really, really terrific. Um, and there's no kind of, uh, there's no us and them thing about, about Sam and, and the rest of us. He is, he's one of the guys, uh, and we share the same sense of humor. The banter in the dressing room is pretty much the same as it's always been, always, you know, with any any band that I've been in, whether it be American or British, it's the same bloody thing, you know. It's got a sort of, <laughs> it varies between extremely highbrow, you know, talking about opera and stuff, and just the usual gutter stuff that any, any band will, will churn out uh, via Monty Python, you know, politics, anything else, religion, anything else that's going on at the time. So it's exactly the same. It's, very, it's a very happy dressing room. And that actually counts for a lot, because when you're on the road, you can't afford to have a bad dressing room. It's, it's the kiss of death. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's funny because, you know, I was thinking today before I called you and I looked at this at, at Sam's age and I thought, man, here's a kid 20 some odd years old going on the road. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the temptations, you know, the girls, the drugs and all that stuff that you <laughs> read about. So, you know, we all, the rest of us live like monks these days, mainly because we, we, we choose to. You give a much better performance on stage if you're in fairly good shape. Um, he... He fits in with that. He goes, you know, he's an early to bed, early to rise guy, and uh, yeah, as I said, that's that's one, that was one of the factors why he got the gig. No, I mean, least of all his playing. He was he, he was chosen for his playing, but actually, he fit the bill as far as being a, um, a clean cut guy. All right, well, I, I've got time for one more question. You know, it's funny, my editor actually asked me this, and I'm trying to remember if my memory serves me correctly, because it doesn't always. But we originally we were talking about Asia, the concept of the super group. And I always remember reading, and maybe this was a media hype thing, but, you know, the reason Asia was chosen as a name was because it was, A, for being early on in the record bins, and it was, you know, Asia was a big continent, so this was supposed to be the next big thing. Was that the reason that you chose the name, or is that all fictitious? Well, actually, you know, the, I, I mean, that, that's always been a bit of a, a, a kind of joke answer, if you like, to the people who ask why, why we called Asia. Uh, I think... We come well after ABBA and Aerosmith anyway, but if you put, if you're looking at the racks, but it, it, it was something that our manager mentioned, Brian Lane, when we had a, a band meeting and we were, we had hundreds of names written down and suggestions. And he said, oh, nobody's used Asia. And it completely slipped past everyone. And then when I got home, I thought, whoa, actually, that's not bad. Four letters, for four, four people, you know, begins and ends with A, so it's kind of geometric. Roger Dean could have have a field day with the logo um, and I called him up the next day and I said you know when you said Asia I, th I actually thought about it and it's, it, I think it's pretty good I think it, we, we should launch that one again and uh, it, got a, it got another airing and at that point people started to think actually yeah it's not bad not bad so it kind of it, it, then of course we had to make up stories about why you, and it, it, in every interview there would be why you call Asia and, uh, and those other reasons will pop out, but they, they weren't
weren't really the reason. We didn't choose it because it was the biggest continent. Um, it was because it sounded and looked good. Geometrically, it looks great, you know. And, of course, Roger did a fabulous job on the logo, and we still use that logo today. It was one of the things that uh, at the end of when we delivered the album to Geffen, the president took me to one side and he said, John, he said, you know, the, uh, the cover's a bit dark for us. The logo is, is legible, and frankly, I don't hear a single. So thank God he wasn't the guy that was marketing it. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, you you destroyed my memory of my youth at uh, where your name come from, came from, but it's it's pretty cool to clear that up. And you know, thank you very much. Did did you ever see the the movie The Forty Year Old Virgin where they referenced yeah, Asia? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. I thought the the placing of Heat of the Moment was absolutely spot on. I thought that was spot on when the guy he comes through the billboard. <laughs> you know. But uh, all the stuff about the, yeah, the the you're gay because you have an Asia poster or something. Well. Okay, you know, that's, uh, we are not above be looking ridiculous, you know. And actually, that film was kind of the, the it was the beginning of, quite, it was the birth of quite a lot of those, those movies, wasn't it, really? Yeah. The whole kind of pack of, of actors that, that came out of that movie went on to spectacular uh, subsequent achievements, you know. So, yeah, I thought that we were kind of, to be associated with that movie is not a bad thing at all. <laughs> I love the movie. And I love most of the movies that that spawned as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, of course I've seen it, yeah. I've seen it three or four times. And, and I have that poster I, I bought on <laughs> the original yeah. door. So, it's so, even, I. It's even, <laughs> yeah, so do you. So, well, listen, yeah. I, I, I can't thank you enough. I'm really excited to have you come to this this place called the Rapids Theater in Niagara Falls, New York. Yeah, yeah we're looking forward to that. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a beautiful venue. You're really going to enjoy it. A lot of people are excited you're coming. I can't wait to see Sam. I've been watching a lot of YouTube clips, and, you know, I think he's yeah, going to be... He's, he's gonna really, be, really good, yeah. Also, my girlfriend lives in Syracuse, so, I'll, you know, it's a good place for me to play. Oh wow! And you got a manager out of Rochester, so you have all kinds right. of connections up in <laughs> up in this area. Yeah, I think I should move to your place. You might, and you mentioned Joe DiMaggio in the new album. I didn't know if you were a Yankees fan as well. There's a lot of New York stuff uh, going well, on. Title: Just I heard someone. It's a quote from from a movie somewhere. It's soft of Joe DiMaggio's glove. And I thought, oh, I've got to use that somewhere. I've got to use that. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea whether his glove was as soft as that, but it's a lovely idea. Yeah, beautiful song, absolutely gorgeous. If you're going to support a team, may as well be the Yankees, I reckon. Well, I'm a Mets fan, but you can, you know, in New York you can't go wrong supporting the Yankees in most of the state. <laughs> <laughs> Yankees oh, win, yeah. the Mets are, you know. Uh, so, all right, well, great. Well, as I said, I'm, I'm really looking well, forward to it. Day. I'll see you uh, in. I'll see you in, in the theater. Okay. Yes, definitely. I got. I have some friends well, there, so maybe I'll have a chance you. chance to stop back and say hello. Please do. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.